last night. Ma, you know I'm going to get home late. Uh, I finished my message uh, last week. And he says, I forgot to ask you, would you do the service? He never even mentioned it to me. But she always has a word in season. So uh, I got home about quarter to nine last night and uh, spent the day out in, in Bet Shiloh. So I says, okay, Lord, uh, you and I together can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So Father, I thank you for you're a God of goodness, you're a God of grace, you're a God of might and power and strength. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. You are the one that will bring revelation and you will bring change to the hearts and the minds of your people. Father, you said if I open my mouth, you would fill it with good things. Holy Spirit, don't let me add or take away anything that you have not ordained. And let every word that I speak bring them to a place of understanding and revelation that it will literally bring change to everyone in this house today for the season that's ahead the season of greatness in their life. So I thank you. I trust in you to help me with this teaching. In Jesus' name I pray. Let's give him a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, about uh, maybe about six weeks ago or two months, maybe that long ago, uh, I, do, I did one week on de developing a strong spirit. How many remember that teaching? And uh, there's about, well, there's about 10 of these teachings, but only five I, I just feel to bring, you know, in the time when I can. Uh, and six weeks ago, we spoke about why do you need to develop your spirit, all right? Uh, and today we're going to bring seven benefits of a strong spirit. Our next week, well, I don't know when I'll do the next one. But why develop your spirit must be a priority. Developing your spirit must be a priority. And uh, the teaching number four is indicators of a weak spirit. And, Dave, and lesson five is indicators of a strong spirit. How many would like to know the indicators in your life, whether you walk in a strong spirit or you walk in a weak spirit? All right, that's good. So the key foundation scripture is Proverbs 18, 14. I'm going to read King James in this. The spirit of a man will sustain his firmity, his infirmity. That infirmity means the spirit of man will sustain his weakness, his sickness. But a wounded spirit, a spirit that is broken or offended, who can bear? And I know so many people in the, in the body of Christ have wounded spirits. They have spirits that have been offended, whether it's from their family or somebody in the church. How many know that? And God wants to heal that. And the Amplified says, the strong spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and a broken spirit who can raise up or bear. That's really powerful. So this is a scripture that we, we read about six weeks ago, and Pastor Vin has used this. And I believe the Spirit of God is not making a suggestion. I mean, you know, God always prepares us for the future. He's a God of faith, and he's a God of now faith, but he has everything taken care of where we're going. In other words, God has already been in your tomorrow. He's already been in the years ahead, he's already prepared and made provision for us to do the things that he's calling us to do. That's a good thing. So in Ephesians 6, uh, verse 10 and 13, he don't make a suggestion. He commands the church for your benefit. He's not a hard taskmaster, but he's a father. How I many you know God is a father? And a father is a protector. He's a shepherd and a father that protects his sheep and protects his family. Isn't that true? So he commands us to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, that we would be able to stand in the day of evil. 
He knows the things are coming, and he wants us to be able to be strong in him in the power of his might. He's commanding us to be strong. Be strong in the Lord. Only in the Lord can you be strong in the power of not your might, of his might, that you're going to be able to stand in the day of trouble. So he wants to strengthen us if we have weak spirit, to have a strong spirit, that it would be a way of life. Now, I'm going to touch on some things, and it doesn't mean that, that you people always have a strong spirit or always have a weak spirit, but having a strong spirit is a way of life. Sometimes we waver when things come against us, and sometimes we may fall to feeling down or waver a little. That doesn't mean you have a, a, a weak spirit. You have a weak spirit when you live in that condition. Understand what I'm saying? You can't live there. Sometimes we can falter in it, but we don't live with a weak spirit. Okay, glory to God. So the spirit of a man sustains him in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and a broken spirit, who can bear him up? Our spirit is one with the spirit of God. How many know that? When you got born again, your spirit was dead and it was risen and became one with the spirit of God. And that produced the kingdom of God within you. In the scripture, it speaks about Jesus prophesying and he was saying, physician, heal yourself. So if you have a strong spirit, when anything comes against you in sickness, infirmity, or anything, any opposition that the enemy throws at you, you got to believe that your healing is not going to come from over here. Your healing is already in you. It's in you. That's why the scripture says, physician, heal yourself. Let your strong spirit rise up because it will sustain him in bodily pain or trouble. So the strong spirit in you, the healer that is in you, will take care of that sickness that's trying to touch your body. So you don't even have to wait for people to pray over you. It's there. It's affordable to you. But if you're home and you don't feel good, you can say, physician, heal yourself. Because there's a kingdom of health in you, in your spirit. This way, your body can line up to the spirit. How I many you know you have a well spirit? Because you, you're one with the spirit of God. So you have everything that it takes to bring healing to oppression and depression because of the, the, the strong spirit that is within you. But when there's a wounded spirit and when there's a weak spirit, you're going to battle to get to that place of healing. You hear what I'm saying? Okay, glory to God. <clears throat> when you have a strong spirit, <clears throat> you will rise up and declare your rights in Jesus Christ. In other words, when you have a strong spirit, you will have a holy boldness. How I many you know a holy boldness? You will be confident, and your spirit man will rise up with the authority of God that's in you. And the church needs to rise up, and you need to decree, and you need to speak your rights in Jesus Christ. You need to speak to the enemy of your life and say, Satan, it is written. Amen. You hear? With authority, all right? With a holy confidence that you know that you know that God will work over, will watch over his word to perform it. Do you believe it? The word of God is medicine. You need to believe that, and that will build up your faith. All right. When you have something to say, you need to say what comes from the word only. When, when we minister to people, we cannot say things that uh, we think, uh, things that, uh, you know, we assume or... Sometimes we could be opinionated. How many know sometimes we can be opinion, opinionated? But God wants us to speak only the word of God. The Bible says speak the word only. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. So the word of God says in Colossians 4, uh, verse 6, let your, speak, your speech always be with grace and that you would know how to answer every man. Do you know how to answer every man when they ask you what's the hope that you have, the hope of glory that's in you? Do you know how to answer people when they're sick or when they need uh, to be built up? Do you know how to speak the word of God or give you, give them your opinion? How many know our opinion, opinion doesn't matter? It's the word of God that's going to change the person because sometime we can give them what we think and we can be sincere but be sincerely wrong. We can give them our opinion and think we're right but be sincerely wrong in that. So we have to speak the word of God, all right? Not opinionated, uh, uh, not anything that would be contrary and doesn't agree with the word of God. Okay, glory to God. When the devil, listen to me, when the devil puts the squeeze on you, only the word of God should come out of you. What comes out of you? <laughs> what comes out of you when you're under pressure? If constantly when you're attacked, only negativity comes and anger or rage or bitterness, those things are in your heart. So you need to cancel them out and get more word in your heart. This way, when you're under pressure, only godly words will come out of your mouth. Right? Because that's the only thing that's going to be effective. So... You know, we can all be, wow, have a great time in church, and we all speak prophetic words and everything. But what happens when you press down? Like I had mentioned a couple of weeks ago, you know, about uh, a Boston cream donut. You know, I have one once a year. Those are my favorite. So you know what? It's round, and it has, who's your favorite, too? So I remember weeks ago, without having a, coffee and Dunkin Donuts and I says all right the years up Lord I want to I, I want a Boston cream donut and I looked at it and it had chocolate and you know when I bit into it the greatest cream came out of that and I said Lord that's the way I want to be when somebody hits me I want cream to come out I want something that tastes good how many know what I'm saying all right, so every time now, I think when I'm under pressure, I think of a Boston cream donut. <laughs> it's visual aid now in my life. Hallelujah. Okay, hallelujah. So when the devil puts the squeeze on you, only the word of God shall come out. All right. A strong spirit will get you through anything. A weak spirit will cause you to waver and speak negativity, and even bring doubt. Is this God? Does God really want me to prosper? Does God really have this? How many ever heard the devil say, God, that's really, not, that's really not what God wants in your life? All right? So when you hear those things, you need to counteract it with a strong spirit and say, no, I know the word of God is true and never settled in heaven. God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Amen. All right. Just like we said, Proverbs 18, 14, the strong spirit of a man will sustain him in bodily pain or trouble, but a weak and a broken spirit, who can raise up or bear? A strong spirit will cause us to overcome every physical attack. It will cause you to overcome financial problems, uh, relational problems, mar marital difficulties, a job problems, career, anything in ministry, any setbacks, emotional challenges, everything that the devil throws at you to come against you in some area of your life. A strong spirit will sustain you in that issue. A strong spirit will make you be an overcomer, knowing you have the victory over those things. Do you believe it? 
You have the victory already. You're not getting the victory. You already received the victory the day you got born again. Jesus gave it to his church 2,000 years ago. All right? Hallelujah. Getting you ready for these days ahead. How many know we have three enemies? How many know what the three our three enemies are? The world, the flesh, and the devil. All right? Me, myself. Well, you know what? I think, I think uh, the world is the least of my problems. The devil's under my feet. Sometime I'm the issue. I'm not under my feet yet. The devil's under my feet. <laughs> think about that. Our biggest problem is you. The biggest problem is me. But, you know, the word of God said we have to crucify our flesh. So what do we do about this? You know, the word of God says he's that a, a friend of the world is, is the love of God is not in him. You can't be a friend of the world and be a lover of God. It don't work. So we have something which is called the word of God that causes us to overcome the world. All right? Uh, God said, come out of her. Come out of Babylon. Come out of the kingdom of darkness. Come out of the dark kingdom that we were once in, where sometime the enemy would like you to go back into that kingdom of darkness. That's an enemy. And that will cause you to have a wounded spirit. That will cause you to have a broken spirit. And a broken spirit uh, is something where eventually the anointing of God, you will lose the anointing. It will leak. Where there's something broken, something cracked, you will lose the anointing. But not in a strong spirit. You'll be so highly anointed, you won't know what to do with yourself. Hallelujah. So it says, come out from the world. Crucify the flesh. That's an enemy. I die daily. Like the apostle said, I die daily. And it says, resist the devil and he will flee. Draw nine to God, he will draw nine to you. So when the enemy comes against you, know your authority. Rise up, not with a wounded spirit, because you're going to doubt yourself. You're going to waver. You're going to be double-minded. You know, there's a scripture. Uh, uh, I think it's in uh, Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel 16.30. It says that God was speaking to, to Israel. And he said, how weak is thy spirit? How weak is thy heart, saith the Lord? Says the Lord God, seeing you do all these crazy things. He was speaking to Israel, doing so many crazy things. He said to them, how weak is your spirit? How weak is your heart that you do these things? So, you know, if, if we're doing things... And you know, these things are, are not pleasing to the Lord. You know, see where your spirit is. Ezekiel, uh, verse 16, verse 30. You know, so, you know, when we're always down and we're always depressed and we have no joy in our life, check your spirit. Check your spirit. I mean, we all get our days, you know, most of the time, we're, we're walking in that authority. But, you know, the enemy comes. But don't let him be effective. See, he's familiar with you. He knows, to, he knows what button to press on you. He's familiar with you. Hallelujah. Proverbs 24.10 says, If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. It says that uh, in the amp, it means... Your spirit is weak. Listen to me, people of God. If your spirit is weak, you're emotional, and your emotions are going to be weak. Your body will line up to a weak soul and a weak spirit, and you become weak, and you become weary of well-doing. And that place where you said, I'm too weary to study the word, I'm too weary to pray. And that's the assignment of the enemy. If he can get you in a place of a weak spirit, then your soul will line up to that. And before you know it, he's out to get your spirit, soul, and body. So 
If you're down all the time and you're depressed and you feel hopeless and it's a way of life and you're broke all the time, you're sick all the time, you got a weak spirit somewhere. But you know what? It says you build yourself up in your most holy faith. The scripture Vincent and myself use, Joshua 1.8, meditate on the word of God, speak the word of God, feed your spirit. You know, I always say, if you don't eat natural food, eventually you're going to die. If you don't get the word of God in you and not just read it, but God didn't say read the word. He said, study the word, meditate on the word, think about it, chew on it, let it nourish your spirit. And it, it will be a repairer of the breach. If you have a wounded spirit and a broken spirit, the word of God will bring healing that you would walk in a strong spirit and conquer everything in your life. And Jude 20, it says, build yourself up in your most holy faith, speaking in the spirit, praying in the Holy Ghost, praying the perfect will in you, strengthening you, your inner man. You need to strengthen your inner man every day building yourself up in your most holy faith, perfecting yourself in love, perfecting yourself in love. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Are you getting this? Your spirit could be weak. If you fall under pressure, your strength is too small. If you stand firm, and succeed under pressure, your spirit is strong. Let me say that again. If you stand firm and succeed under pressure, and you don't murmur and complain, and you take authority over that situation in your life, knowing that the enemy is defeated, and you're the conqueror over that, that you have defeated the enemy through the blood of Jesus. You have to know that. So you have to use that. You have to know that. All right, so if you stand firm and succeed under pressure, your spirit is strong. A strong spirit will help you receive from God. Okay, the stronger your faith, the more you can accomplish. How many know that? The stronger your faith, the more you can accomplish for the kingdom of God and in the ministry. The stronger your faith, the more you're going to be successful in everything, whether it's in the workforce, whether it's in your home, or whether it's in ministry. Do you believe that? Yeah. Strong spirit. Okay. Uh, the stronger your spirit is, the easier it is to receive. Because the more your spirit is strong, you have great faith. We have these different levels of faith. How many know that? More faith, great faith, and faith. I want to walk in great faith. Do you want to walk in great faith? So in order to walk, you need to make sure you're strengthening your spirit, man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That your belief system is strong. And you know what? It says that the stronger your spirit is, the easier it, be, it, it is to become to receive. Some people find it hard to receive from God because they don't have a strong spirit. There's not enough faith in your heart because what's in your heart will come out of your mouth. So feed your spirit, man, that we would have great faith. And when you have great faith, you can trust God for anything, no matter what you go through. If you need a million dollars down the road and you know you're a giver, and you know you give and you obey, God can meet that need just like that. You hear what I'm saying? Nothing is too hard for God. Nothing is impossible. But it all depends if you have a weak spirit or a strong spirit. A strong spirit, I can believe God for anything. Nothing is impossible with God. And he's glorified because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. Your belief system, he has said, only believe. That rejoices the heart of the Father. Believe and have faith. And when you believe and have faith, you're more than a conqueror. 
You're more, you're a conqueror at every situation. You will never fail. You will never fail in your daily life and what God has for you down the road. We are more than conquerors. We are not failures. The devil has failed and you're not a failure. Hallelujah. 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 Okay. Uh, Hebrews 6.12. Through faith and patience. That word patient means uh, through endurance, consistency, standing your ground, we inherit the promises. Stand your ground. How many of you believe in God for something? And you believe in God. Sometime my prayer is answered right away. Sometime it takes a little time. But I'm going to give you one thing I'm going to say to you. What you're believing for, the time you believe to the time you receive, it's in the waiting that you will get the victory. From the time you believe to the time you receive, in the waiting will cause you either to win or to lose. You hear? The waiting is the hardest part. I don't have problem with faith. I have problem with patience. Patience. And that's the key, because we just read, through faith and patience, they are called twin sisters. Because faith is what you believe what you don't see. So you have the patience to believe that what God promised, he will bring it to fruition. Did he promise you? Is the word true ever settled in heaven? Did he say it? Well, he's not a man that he should lie. He said it, I believe it, and that settles it. So I'm going to stand with faith in my heart looking at the evidence of what I'm believing. And in that, I'm going to be unmovable and unshakable. And when I get a little weary, I've got to put more word into my spirit. You understand? Because we're going to be tried for our faith. The enemy tries your faith because he fears your faith because he knows the power of the God kind of faith in you. All right? So either the battle's going to be won or lost in the waiting. So just remember that. It's all about patience. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Uh, you need to reconsider every situation in your life with the word. Take the light of God's word to every situation that is in your life that you don't have an answer for. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to How many have ever said, I don't know what to do? Some people are saying that for five years. I don't know what to do. You need to recon, reconsideration, reconsider your situation and put the light of God's word to that situation. He will give you instruction and wisdom how to handle that situation. But sometimes we don't allow God to get involved with it. So we want to make all our own decisions. You know, and I said a couple of weeks ago, uh, People say, why do bad things happen uh, to good people? And I says, because good people make bad choices. Isn't that the truth? God don't make bad things happen to good people. Good people make bad choices. God has nothing to do with that. And we, people blame God. Well, look at these people were so good. Look what God did to them. God didn't do anything to them. God is a God of grace and love and mercy. He's a father. And we blame God because we don't know our enemy. Sometimes, you know, when we're supposed to not be ignorant of spiritual, of Satan's devices. Don't be ignorant. Recognize your enemy. God is never your enemy. He will never be your enemy. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Father. So the light of God's word. Proverbs 4, 18. I'm not going to go long with this. I'm almost finished. Uh, I know a lot of you are tired, but I'll be back. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Proverbs 4, 18. Talking about putting the light to every situation in your life. When you don't know the answer, 
and sometime a difficult situation arises, you have to make a choice, you have to make a decision. It says, but the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the full day. So he's talking about the path of the righteous. How I many know you are, you are righteous in God's eyes, right? So there's the path of the righteous, right? Every day you get up, you serve God, you're walking in a path where it says it's the path of the righteous. It's like the light of dawn. You walk in the light of God's love. You walk in the light of God's truth. You, you, you walk in the, the light of God's mercy and provision. His light is in you. He's the light of the world. You are the light of the world. The life and the light of God shines through you. I always say, uh, if the, if the, the lights would go down and the sun wouldn't shine and the moon wouldn't shine. Do you know that you would glow in the dark? Yes. You're a light. All right? Hallelujah. So what does that mean? The path of the righteous. It means when you walk in the spirit of God, when you walk in, in love, when you walk in holiness, it's a place of safety. When you walk in a strong spirit, with a spirit of determination, when you know you have a strong spirit, you are in a safe place. You are in a safe place. The path of the righteous is like the light of the dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the fullness of day. Speaking about to the coming of the Lord. Hallelujah. Like we are so familiar with Psalm 91. Do we dwell in the secret place of the Most High? Do we abide in Him? That's the key. Are you dwelling in God and God in you? Are you familiar with Him? Do you acquaint yourself with Him through the Word? It says, if you acquaint yourself with Him, good shall come unto you. That's in Job 22. If you cleave to Him, He's your life. It's abiding in him. It's walk, that's walking in the path of righteousness. When you walk in the spirit, when you walk in, in the light of God's love, the light of God's humility, the holy fear of God, when you walk in the light of holiness, you are in a safe place, and that determines you have a strong spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Place of safety. It's a place of protection. I want you to turn with me, and I'm going to finish with this scripture. Job 28. Now we're speaking about the path of the righteous. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These are all the benefits of a strong spirit. How many want to walk in a strong spirit? How many want to walk hidden in the light of God? You see, I'm going to read something to you. This is so powerful. Uh, Job 28, verse 7 through 8. This is speaking about walking and abiding in God and walking in the path of righteousness. It speaks about in verse 7. He's speaking the path. This is a path, and this path is speaking about the path of righteousness, the, the way of holiness, the way of walking in a strong spirit. It says, the path, listen to me, no bird of prey knows, nor has the falcon's eye caught sight of it. The proud beast have not trodden it down, nor has the fierce, fierce lion passed over it. I'm going to read it again. This path, which is the path of righteousness that we walk in, where we live in righteousness, it's a fixed place that we are in, right? It's a strong spirit. Walk in that holiness, walk in that love, stay in that place continually in a strong spirit that you know you're God and God is walking through you and in you and you're being led by the spirit of everything in your life. God promises you this benefit, this path, 
It says no bird or prey knows about it. In other words, the enemy can never, never walk in a path of righteousness or holiness or, the, or in light because he's darkness and he can't look at the light. He can't look at the light. He doesn't know the way of righteousness. He doesn't know the way of truth. He doesn't know the way of holiness. He only knows darkness. You understand? So when you walk in that path, you're on golf with the light. So it says, no bird nor prey knows that path. When you walk with a strong spirit, he can't find you. You hear? When you're walking in the light, he can't touch you. He can't enter into light because he's darkness. He can't go there. So the Spirit of God's saying, nor has the falcon's eye caught sight of it. They have no knowledge of it because they're spiritually dead. The enemy's spiritually dead. He has no knowledge of it. Nor has the falcon's eye caught sight. The proud beasts have not trodden it down. Nor has the fierce lion, which is Satan, passed over it. So when you walk in a strong spirit, you confound the enemy in your life. And you will see less and less attacks against you. We're going to go through trials and testings. But you know what? It says no evil will come now your dwelling place. Trials and tribulation are going to come because they perfect us. But sometimes we hear of evil and satanic, demonic forces against the church. Shouldn't be. He shouldn't even see us. He can't find us. If he recognizes you and finds you by what you say or your actions, get ready for an attack. You hear? So you need to heal the wounded spirit. You need to heal the weak spirit. You need to feed your spirit. It's a matter of life. A lot of people in the churches die before their time. Why? Why? Why do people die before their time? Because God needs them in heaven at 28 or 30? No. The Old Testament, they lived, Moses lived 120 years old. His eye wasn't dim. He wasn't sick. In fact, when I was studying in, in, in a Hebrew scriptures years and years ago. When Moses died, he didn't die sick. God had to take his body from Israel because Israel would worship him and kept him, you know, they didn't want to bury him. They made a God out of Moses. So you know what God did? He took him away, and he took Moses home with a kiss. <laughs> because when God breathed in life into Adam, he put his face to him, and he breathed life into Adam's nostrils. He put his mouth to his mouth and his nose to his nose. When somebody puts his mouth to your mouth, that's a kiss. So the way he took Moses home, just took him, took the breath out of him. Hallelujah. So we're going to walk in a strong spirit. You're going to build yourself up. Hmm? Because when there's a weak spirit, there's consequences. Okay? Build yourself up. There are benefits of walking in a strong spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Okay. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you. Why don't we just